So you're saying white screen. I've never, I've never heard of this term. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe some of our, maybe some in our audience have, but so you're, are you, you're just on a big white psych? We're, we're on a, what the word is a big muslin. I have a picture of it that I'll send you. Okay. Um, so it's a, I, in kind of a big horseshoe shape. I surrounded our set with muslin, like a, whatever it was, like a 50 foot by 300 foot muslin, whatever it was. And um, in fact, I have a line diagram I can send you. Oh, please do. All of that yeah. stuff would be really fun to put yeah. in the show notes. Yeah. So we could, um, we could backlight through that, basically illuminate that. Okay. And let that be our sky. So now we're photographing the source and we could make it the appropriate color. Just look up on the manifesto. What color should it be? You know, and, and program that all in. We, we lit it all with sky panels, which are color mixable and programmable. So um, I, I kind of wrote up a, a cue sheet based on my manifesto of, of our first swing at all of these scenes. So the programmer could program the whole movie in and at least have a representation of each scene. We would usually change it greatly once we got into the heat of it, but at least we had sure. the movie catalog in, in the uh, console before we even started shooting. We just did all the prep. So we had, we had the big horseshoe around, which was basically like our distant sky. Then we had uh, more grid cloths and things. It was the whole set was surrounded by white. That was our skylight. So I could make the skylight different color than the horizon. I could, you know, I could make a warm horizon or a cooler sky and I could, I could really mix it up. So the whole ship or the whole set covered in this white, yeah. you could blast through any color you needed to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your skies are going to be a different color than the ocean, yeah. highs, lows, all this. Right. As the ship is moving, are you also like changing it? So like, like you said, when the ship tilts up and the portholes are looking at the sky, there's going to yeah. be a different color than yeah. when it's tipped down and it's facing yeah. the water. So were you programming those light changes in the sky panels? I didn't have to because the set was doing it. Um, oh, so you, okay. So you were already kind of making the horizon. Right. I could, I could differentiate those colors. So when the ship, you know, went down on the port side, it was looking at all the light, the color of the light, everything I had low. When it went up on wow. the port side, it was now looking at all the skylight I had up there, which was a different color. So you have this very natural kind of change in the light that relates to all of the movement on the ship and everyone you know, <laughs> swing and as water's coming down and dripping from the ceiling, it's doing this and, you know, yeah. um, and the lights changing. And we didn't have any hard light until the very end. They're in storm conditions the entire time, which at first I think, okay, that's going to be boring. Just being kind of top soft conditions all through the whole movie. And, and I thought, okay, what I have to do is really mix up these times a day. You know, since, since Tom wrote, the, the movie, you know, observing these different shifts that came in and out um, every four hours, the time of day would change. So it would, it would go from late afternoon to dusk to night, which mm. they turn on their red lights and they had a whole separate kind of deal for night. Uh, dawn, you know, very, we had some dawns that were very cyan and, and uh, another dawn is very gray. And so I would kind of help uh, tell the story of the journey by the color of the light and the time of day and how the mm. dawns would change. The camp I came into different weather conditions and things like that. So I did change things up quite a bit, even in that somewhat limited lighting direction. I could change the contrast up. If they were in a brighter area of the ocean, I could uh, uh, let those windows go a little hotter, let the inside go a little darker. If they were, you know, and, and things like that. Um, and it was good because when it came time to do the visual effects, all the marrying of all this stuff, uh, they brought in a new visual effects person to finish named Nathan McGinnis, who's wonderful. And he was having trouble understanding what we were doing with the lighting. And so all I had to really do was give him the manifesto. <laughs> Say, well, here, here's yeah. what we did. Here's the plan. And he read it. And like, oh, I had no idea we could do all this. So, yeah, this is this was by design from the beginning. Here's how the horizon should look. Here's the color of the water. Here's the color of the sky. Wow. Here's the clarity. Here's, here's how much atmosphere is in the air. Here's how bright it is in relation to the interiors. And so he could, now he had a roadmap, you know, and nights was even another thing where he could, that opened up possibilities for him, our, our conception of what night would be. And, and uh, um, so that much of the planning done helped us help free our brains to see <laughs> what was happening in front of us. Yeah. At least have the, the concept of it, you know.